Thank you to everyone for joining, joining this uh, very first ever, <laughs> probably not the last, virtual Beecher Terrace resident meeting. Uh, my name is Pam Bischoff. I'm the Assistant Choice Neighborhoods Coordinator with Global Metro Housing Authority. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our Executive Director, Lisa Osanka, to get us started. Lisa? There you go. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Pam. So we are excited about the new replacement units that will be becoming available later this year uh, so that uh, residents at Beecher Terrace who want to come back to the site or other replacement units are able to do that. These, uh, the new Beecher Terrace will be one of Louisville's greenest communities and absolutely the smartest, most equitable, and most engaged in our city. And that's because you all have played a huge part in shaping that vision for the new Beecher Terrace. And we hope you'll continue to share your ideas during the upcoming virtual design meetings we'll be holding on both the Baxter Community Center and the Porter Paints site located at 13th and Muhammad Ali Boulevard. Be paying attention to the Vision Russell updates and website uh, to make sure you get uh, more information about those activities. But uh, back to tonight. In tonight's call, you will learn more about our first two phases of on-site residential rental units. The 450 Roy Wilkins Avenue building, which is exclusively for people age 55 plus, as well as our first phase of family units. And there will be more on-site units to come. You'll also hear about the off-site replacement units, which are currently available. Newbridge Place in the Fern Creek neighborhood, and Louisville Historic Rising right here in the Russell neighborhood. I'd now like to introduce you to my staff and our developer and management team. They will walk you through the entire reoccupancy process from submitting your pre-application to the uh, support services and funds that are available to help you with your move and the lifetime preference for Beecher Terrace replacement units that you have. Uh, Pam's already introduced herself, so I will at this point, uh, there we go, uh, introduce Kathleen O'Neill, LMHA Choice Coordinator, Kathy Head, LMHA Manager of Leased Housing, Talanda Holland, Urban Strategies Project Manager, and Octavia Johnson-Norman, McCormick Baron Management Regional Director. But first, we'll do some Zoom tips. Pam? Okay, thank you, Lisa. So I hope everyone was able to log on or call in um, easily. We're going to just go over some tips and um, uh, you'll just have to bear with me. I can only see the, the, um, the shared screen. So I'm going to try to describe a few things to you. And then we also have some screenshots to kind of help you out. So as John was saying before we got started, the audio and video for all call participants um, is turned off. Um, at the end of the call, we will have a question and answer session, and I'm, we're going to show you how to submit your questions and how to raise your hand in just a second. Um, you can also ask the question using the chat at any time, and so now we're going to show you where that is. So if you're joining us via your smartphone, to access the chat function on your smartphone, there should be three dots um, in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen labeled more and you would just tap on that. And then this will give you the option to join the chat or to raise your hand. And so um, you can see kind of what that little menu looks like there. If you are on a computer, um, you will see a bar at the bottom of your screen and the little uh, conversation bubble that says chat. And if you click on that, you should get um, a panel on the right hand side of your screen where you can type in questions. You're welcome to type in your questions throughout the presentation um, and we will be keeping track of those throughout our session and um, answering those um, at the end. Also at the end of the pre presentation if you uh, need to raise your hand um, if you're not able to type um, you may uh, just click the raise your hand but if you would wait until the end for that. If you're not seeing the raise your hand function, I know personally um, I had to click on participants, which is the two little people there, and then that option popped up for me. So if you're not seeing it with just the chat bubble, then you might wanna try that. 
Um, so we can maybe try this, and, and John, you might have to let me know if you see this because I'm on a full screen. Um, but can we see now? Can John, can you see um, if folks try to raise their hand right now, would you be able to see that? Uh, I would because I just opened the chat window. Okay. Because that's where it, it shows up. Okay. And I thought maybe if it's not too complicated, maybe we could try to let folks raise their hand. So if you're, and you'll have to tell me if, you, if you're seeing folks doing this. So um, it, all Beecher, original Beecher residents that are joining us on the call, raise your hand. All right. Oh, I've got some Great. people raising I, hands. Can you see those? Nice. Still yes, I can see the little pop-up. Okay. Nice. Okay. And then I think, do you have to click that again to take your hand down? Uh, I can lower their hands or you can oh, okay. lower your, the participants can lower <laughs> their hands as well if they feel uh, their uh, comment or question has been addressed. Okay, great. Well, I just wanted everyone to get a little practice with that before we moved on. All right. Um, we will be um, recording this session and we'll make this available on the Vision Russell website afterwards. So, uh, so if you know someone who wanted to join but wasn't able to, um, please let them know that it will be available at www.visionrussell.org. Um, we do have some folks only uh, joining us by phone and so um, you'll have to pardon me if I read some of these Lives. I'll try not to read verbatim for those who are um, joining via computer, but we do want everyone to get all the information. Okay, so today we're going to be going over the materials that um, were mailed out in the packets. Um, those went out the 30th and 31st. Um, one of the items that was in that packet was a policy about all of the original Beecher residents right to return. So all original Beecher residents who were relocated from the site will be offered admission to all 758 replacement housing units. And this includes both on-site units and off-site units before the general public, before anyone else. So at the very first lease up. Residents who relocated from Beecher Terrace will have this admissions preference for life. The Choice Neighborhoods Initiative ensures all residents receive a first preference, but the Louisville Metro Housing Authority is extending this preference for your lifetime. This includes now um, at, or at any point in the future. And we're going to go over these preferences here at the bottom. Um, if you were head of the household, you'd have first preference. If you were not head of the household at the time that you relocated, you would have second preference and we'll explain that more in just a bit. Okay, the right to return policy, I believe that's about a two to three page document that was in your packet. Um, I feel like the definitions do a pretty good job of explaining this policy, so that's where we're going to focus our attention. An original Beecher Terrace resident, when we refer to this, we mean a resident who occupied a unit at Beecher Terrace under a valid lease on or after June 28, 2016, which was the date um, of the Choice Neighborhoods grant application submission. So that is the date. Lease compliant. All those who are lease compliant receive the lifetime preference. Uh, if you remain lease compliant at the time of relocation and um, it, up until you reoccupy a replacement unit. The right to return. All residents who meet these lease compliance requirements maintain a lifetime preference to occupy a replacement housing unit both on and off site. And replacement housing are any of the 758 on or off site Beecher rental units that replace the original 758 Beecher Terrace units. The units that are being built back on the Beecher ter Terrace site are mixed income and we will be going over um, kind of that unit breakdown, but that means that some of the replacement units will be new or rehabbed units um, off of the Beecher Terrace site, both in Russell and in other areas of opportunity around Louisville Metro.
Okay, as we said, um, lease compliance is key for retaining the right to return. Um, some grounds for denial for assistance are that the housing authority will deny assistance to any original resident who near the time of their interest in exercising the right of return either now or in the future is not lease compliant or fails to complete any aspect of the application or lease up process. We'll talk more about available resources if you need assistance in either of these areas in just a few moments. Okay, reoccupancy packets, as we said, that contained this policy and some other information were mailed out to all original Beecher Terrace heads of household. And this packet included a pre-application. Um, we're going to talk about how the waiting list is going to work. And um, this is important as far as the pre-application, it's on some hot pink paper. Um, if you fill this out and return it by April 29th, 2020, you will be placed into the waiting list initial lottery. And any applications returned after April 29th will still be placed on the waiting list, but by the date and the time that they were received. Um, these packets were mailed to 607 heads of household. And so you should have received this by this time. If you have not and you believe you're eligible, please call us. The phone number is 502-569-6076. And we'll be happy to repeat that again at the end of the presentation. Um, I, just to also mention, um, we have developed a frequently asked questions document um, that will also be on the Vision Russell website. Okay, and the phone number is, is on the website as well. So the way this is going to work is after the lottery is established um, and the waiting list uh, is, the initial waiting list is ex established, excuse me, um, as soon as Beecher Terrace replacement housing units become available, applicants will be contacted in the order that they appear on the waiting list. You'll also have an opportunity on that pre-application to indicate your preference for housing. This would include whether you're interested in the senior site for adults ages 55 and over, or if you're interested in a family site, or if you're interested in only the on-site replacement units, the off-site replacement units, or both. So we have had some questions about what happens after we send in the pre-application. So this is just a, a quick rundown of the process. Once a unit becomes available, you will receive an offer letter. This is if you're at the top of the waiting list and a unit becomes available, which you have indicated you might, might be interested in, you'll receive an offer letter and what is called a yes letter to return to the housing authority. It lists the property and gives contact information for the landlord so that you can contact them and view the available unit to see if you might be interested in it. The next step is to return the yes letter to the housing authority. It will also have an area for you to include your current landlord's contact information in the space provided. Following this, the Housing Authority's um, Housing Choice Voucher Office will schedule a new family appointment with you. After that new family appointment and prior to the next step, the Housing Authority will complete a lease compliance check. And that's just where they will contact the landlord that you listed on your yes letter to make sure that you meet the lease compliance requirements. Next, you will attend a scheduled briefing, and this is where the paperwork starts. So you will sign a statement of family responsibility. You will be given a tenancy addendum, which goes with your lease, and you will fill that out with your landlord. After the lease and the tenancy addendum are completed, you'll be bringing that back to the HCB office for their review. After this is complete, you may return the paperwork to your landlord fully executed and schedule your move in. So the lifetime preference order, we said we were going to explain that a little bit more. Original heads of household will receive first preference. Second preference will go to newly created second households. And a couple of, of examples of this, um, if a household splits and creates two heads of household, or if you have a child who is a minor at the time of relocation and who has since turned 18 and ready for um, 
their own household, then um, they would re still receive preference. It would just be second preference. So this is more about what it means to have a lifetime preference. So no original Beecher Terrace residents to complete and return a pre-application will ever be removed from the list. So this is why we are encouraging folks, even if you may not think you would be interested in moving back now, if you think you might be interested in the future, you might wanna go ahead and fill out that pre-application and send it in. There are a couple of instances where applicants may be moved to the bottom of the waiting list. This would be if an applicant has accepted a replacement unit, and so you've moved into that replacement unit, you're not removed from the list, but you might you would be moved to the bottom. Or if an applicant refuses two offers for replacement housing, unless that unit was refused for good, good cause. Um, those are detailed in the waiting list policy, which is in your packet, but I'll just go over a couple of those really quickly. Um, one would be if the unit lacks excel accessibility features that's required um, by you or someone in your household because of a disability. If the unit is not convenient to public transportation or childcare needed for the family to work. If there's been a serious illness or hospitalization or death of a family member that makes this not a good time to move. And the last, if the unit is in a senior site um, for persons 55 and older, and either that is not your preference, um, if you're just not interested in that right now, you might still be in the future, that's okay, um, that is, is uh, considered good cause. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to Kathy Head, Manager of Leased Housing for the uh, Louisville Metro Housing Authority to talk about assistance for moving. Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to go over the amounts of money that you're eligible for once you go back to a replacement feature unit. Uh, the, the fixed payment will be 900 for one bedrooms, 1100 for two bedrooms, and three bedrooms is 1300. And that amount will be determined by the size unit that you lease. So it's not the size unit you're in, but the size that you go into is what the amount will be based on. Um, you'll also be eligible for assistance with security deposits and any utility deposits. So it'll kind of be like when you moved out, you're eligible for the same benefits. And my phone number is on the last page of the questions and answers. And most of you probably still have it, but it's 569-3479 and feel free to call me with any questions. And once I find out you've been made eligible and sent to Beecher, then um, just contact me and we'll discuss how you'll get your payments. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. <laughs> and Kathy did mention uh, utilities. And some of the replacement housing options will require residents to put utilities in their own name. Um, for example, the um, phase one uh, 450 Royal Wilkins Boulevard building, actually utilities will be included there um, with the exception of internet, TV, um, but the family housing um, will, uh, residents there will need to have um, utilities in their names. So, Here's the contact information. Again, this is listed in your packet. Um, the information is also um, at the Vision Russell website um, for Louisville Gas and Electric and the Louisville Water Company. If you're unsure uh, if you have ever owed a balance or if you currently have a balance, um, it'd be a good, good time to go ahead and contact those folks. Um, if you discover that you do and you need assistance with that, um, there's a list uh, in the packet of the area community ministries. And this is also our, our opportunity to talk about the case management services that are available through the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over now to Talonda Holland. She's the project manager for um, urban strategies here in Louisville. Pam, um, just one moment before Talonda begins, the water, at the family units at Beecher Terrace is paid for. It's just the um, Louisville Gas and Electric that would be the responsibility 
of the resident. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Thanks, Pam and Kathleen. So just, this is Talanda, project manager for Urban Strategies. Just wanna first start out by saying hello and sending healthy greetings on behalf of the Urban Strategies team. I know our team are really missing our families um, and those home visits. Um, many of you may already know Urban Strategies, but just want to give a little overall um, background on Urban. Urban Strategies is an organization that specializes in human services development as a part of neighborhood revitalization. Simply said, Urban Strategies is here to serve, support, and advocate for all Beecher Terrace families and your family members. We do this by providing um, intensive case management services. And again, those that is to the heads of households and all family members. We have been there for many families um, as you relocated out of Beecher, um, supported several of you all through the relocation process, and also here to help you all as you are considering uh, moving back on site to Beecher Terrace. Urban Strategies partners with several community organizations and resources. We do this in order to help families pay rent and utilities, find employment, educational support for our youth, summer programs, helping with illness and other health needs. We have helped some families uh, to purchase homes, but also in the past helped youth to buy prom dresses and also even help with transportation. So basically our case managers really work with the families to determine what you all need and do our best to make sure that we are helping you uh, meet those needs. This is happening especially um, during the time of COVID-19. Many of you all have probably received phone calls from our staff checking in um, on you all. If you have not received those calls, I urge you to call our office at 384-0786 during this time. As any other time, our team are working to make sure that we are taking care of our Beecher families. We are um, helping families connect with resources, um, apply for unemployment, also providing care packages and food boxes for those families that need them. Need them. Um, most importantly, throughout this process, um, during COVID and even after, working with the Beecher Terrace families, you all are our biggest partners. We want to make sure that we do everything to support you all being able to move back for anyone who has not maybe talked with their case manager recently, please do so, call the office and we will make sure you get connected. For anyone needing assistance with their reoccupancy re packet, you can also call the office, we will support you, but also direct you to the right persons that also may be able to help you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Talanda. And if I apologize, that phone number is not on this slide, but we'll just repeat it one more time for Urban Strategies and, and Talana, correct me if, if this is not correct. 384-0786. Yes, that's correct. Okay, great. Okay, this is, I know um, all of our residents who've been to resident meetings have seen uh, pictures of the master site plan. And then now, of course, Anytime that you drive by the Beecher Terrace site, you can see all of the activity that is still going on there. Um, I don't have, a, oh, can you all see my pointer? Can you see the mouse or not? I'm not sure if you can. Yes, we can see your pointer. You can, okay, great. <laughs> right, so down here we have the phase one building. This is the 450 Roy Wilkins building. Um, this is for the uh, 117 units for H55 and over. So this is as going up now and uh, slated to be completed this fall. And then the other phase that you can see as you drive by the site is phase two, which is in this area right here, 108 units. And that will also be completed uh, probably late, late fall. We're looking at November, I believe. So. We'll go over those timelines as well, and they'll be included in the FAQ. And then um, these are the other phases of future development here. OK, 
Okay, so the on-site housing and amenities is the first thing that we're going to talk about and just a general overview here before I turn it over to uh, McCormick Barron Management. Um, the uh, complete uh, revitalization will include four or five rental housing phases and one um, home ownership phase. Um, the completed site will, will be a total of 620 mixed income rental units. 316 of those um, are Beecher Terrace replacement units. There'll be 132 other uh, affordable units and 172 uh, market rate uh, units. Um, 20 home ownership units are planned with six of those being affordable and 14 market or unsubsidized when we say market rate. Um, these are going to be uh, multi-generational, -genera highly energy efficient, and amenity rich uh, communities. And uh, I'm going to turn it over now to Octavia Johnson Norman. She is Regional Director of McCormick Barron Management to tell us more about these uh, new housing units and all of these amenities. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hi, Octavia. Yes, we can hear you. Hello, how are you doing? Um, I just wanted to say thank you for allowing McCormick Barron Management to partner with you guys on, on, on bringing these brand new homes to our community. Uh, McCormick Barron Management has been uh, creating housing, housing and these types of developments for several years. Our first phase, as you can see on the first, first slide, is 55 and older, our community, and it is 117 units. Two, okay, there we go. Uh, we have 114 one-bedroom apartments, and we have three two-bedroom apartments, and our buildings features indoor and outdoor community spaces. We have a management office, a fitness center, crafting room, a doctor's office, a hair salon, and laundry rooms on each floor. Our next community is our family space. There's the, here's well, the right floor here, plan. Sorry, I might be going a little okay. fast. It's the actual floor plan. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is interesting to do it this way, guys. Um, <laughs> this is our floor plan for our apartment. <laughs> and so you can take a look at that at the one bedroom, one bath and take a look at the two bedroom, one bath as well. And also to note in our community um, alone, we have a laundry room on each floor. And uh, don't forget the doctor's office and a hair salon on, as well in our building. So I see some folks, is, uh, we're gonna go on ahead, but I do see a couple of folks raise hands and um, we will answer your questions. Um, at the end of the presentation. So thank you. Oh, okay. right. Keep going. All right. <laughs> so our, our next phase now is, is just talking a little bit on our family family phase, which is phase two. Of course, it's late 2020, maybe a couple of delays on, on construction with everything that's going on in our world. Uh, but we do have some town uh, phase two, our family phase is made up of townhomes. And we also have walk-up style residential buildings. This is our family. It's 108 rental units on this space. Um, that's comprised of replacement units, uh, affordable housing units, and market rate units as well. Uh, we also have a management office. Um, each floor plan has, we have one, two, and three bedrooms available. And each unit has its own washer and dryer provided. Uh, we have playgrounds throughout our property and our complex. And of course, we'll have amenities in our office for our residents, which includes a fitness center as well. Um, and the next slide is the, just the floor plan of our family, um, our family apartments, which is a little bit different than our, our senior phase. Um, but you can take a look at those. I'm looking at the one bedroom, one bath, and a two bedroom, one bath. And we do have some accessible units too that I like to know. Uh, just remember on the family phase, there's a washing or dryer in every apartment, but on our senior building, they're on each floor. And the next slide, is that my last? Is that it yeah. for me? 
I think that, yes, these are the townhome style floor plans. So here we're showing two floors um, in okay. each of the, the floor plans. We have all the same amenities, right? Mm -hmm. With okay. all the same amenities. And I, I think that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Octavia. And I'm just, I know there'll be questions. You're welcome. So <laughs> keep yeah, those hands no raised. We no will get problem. to you. We're, we're just about, okay. about through. So, okay. Thank you. Hey, mm -hmm. Pam, it's John. Uh, I sent a message to everyone that had their hand up to see if they had a question. So if you have your hand up, maybe check the chat window uh, so we can make sure that uh, we get your questions in. Thanks. Thanks, John. Okay, well, again, thank you, Octavia, for talking to us more about the revitalized Beecher Terrace site and the different types of units that will be available on site. As we said before, um, some of the replacement units will also be developed off of the Beecher Terrace site. Um, these will consist um, of 442 additional units, um, or not additional, but of the, the total um, 700 plus units that are, that are being replaced. So these uh, will be a mix of new construction and existing one, two, and three bedroom units. They're located in neighborhoods of opportunity throughout Jefferson County, or within the Russell neighborhood, and all 442 replacement units will be available by the end of the grant period, which is September 30th, 2023. We'll be announcing these kind of as they come online. Um, these will be, uh, we have some available now, which we're gonna talk about, um, such as the, the ones that we're gonna describe at uh, Louisville Historic Rising. Um, but as time goes on, we will be adding more offsite units that'll be available and um, all of um, you guys will get notifications um, from us as those become available and we'll be posting information on the website. And then if you have selected offsite units as something that you are interested in on your pre-application, then you'll also be getting information about those as um, you come up on the waiting list for those. So currently available offsite units, we have Global Historic Rising. These are a, a scattered sites. They're located in the Russell neighborhood, so buildings throughout the Russell neighborhood, historic buildings. They're, uh, in this development, there are five two-bedroom and 15 three-bedroom affordable units with a variety of floor plans. Um, all the units have washer-dryer hookups, dishwashers, and central air. And um, we all know about all of the great development that's going on in the neighborhood, um, and as well as that uh, the units uh, in Russell are convenient to downtown, the interstate, um, West Broadway, and then the brand new rapid transit bus line. The other units that are currently available um, are, I believe these are townhomes, someone correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but these are offsite at Newbridge Place. They're in the Fern Creek neighborhood. Um, and these are existing units as well. They've been rehabbed. Um, they're owned and managed by the Housing Authority in the Bardstown Road area. Um, there's some of the schools, uh, Bates Elementary Cluster. Um, there is more detailed information about the school clusters on the fly. It's in your packet um, and on the Vision Russell website. They also have washer and dryer hookups, dishwashers, and central air. And these consist of 13 one-bedroom and 14 two-bedroom units. So those are the off-site units that we have available now. Um, as I said, there's, um, there's also a map on the Vision Russell website um, that will show you um, the exact locations of, of all of the off-site units as they come online. So these are the only two that are on there right now, um, but we'll have more as time goes on. So I might ask John um, if you would like to talk about it. Lisa mentioned at the beginning of our presentation um, uh, that there would be some activities surrounding Baxter Community Center and Walnut Park recreation areas. And just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up about what you might be hearing soon. So John, do you want to touch on this? Sure, gladly. Um, so as Lisa mentioned uh, towards the beginning of the presentation, uh, we're going to be looking for some community input on uh, some designs and possible uses for uh, the Baxter Community Center and uh, replacement for Old Walnut Park and potential uses for the Porter Paint site uh, because that is uh, LMHA property now. We need to turn all of those uh, projects back to some sort of positive community use. Unfortunately, because of the current 
uh, COVID-19 outbreak, we're not really able to have public meetings just yet. So uh, most of this, uh, most of the input opportunities will be online through a variety of methods, possibly surveys, possibly uh, presentations like we're having right now. Uh, and we will be doing this uh, in April and May. So uh, all of that information will be available on the Vision Russell website as it becomes available, but we should have some materials uh, probably sometime next week, uh, towards the end of the week, that would uh, help us get the ball rolling and let everybody know a little bit more what's involved in the project and in our process to get input from everyone. Um, and if you do go to the Vision Russell webpage, there should be some contact information for staff. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can contact me directly. My name's John Hawkins, uh, and my phone number and email should be on the Vision Russell website. Um, so a couple of different ways you can get to uh, the information we've been talking about today. Um, under housing opportunities, you would want to go down here to original Beecher residence. Um, if you scroll a little bit down farther on the page, uh, you can kind of click through these if you want to get some information on specific things. Um, but then there's also this big red box, original Beecher Terrace residence. You can click there and so we'll, we'll do that. Okay. So here um, was the information about the resident meeting. Then here are the contents of the pre-application packet. So you can click on any one of these links and get to those documents. Um, the only one that's not available is the pre-application. So if you need one of those, um, again, uh, that phone number, 569-6067. Our Housing Choice Voucher Office um, also manages um, Section 8, so there's a lot of mail that comes through there. So we have that on a special paper, so that's why we um, are not making that available here on the website, just to make sure that um, your pre-application would not be mixed in with, um, with other applications, okay? Um, and then down here, you can take a look at the different floor plans. And then here's information about the offsite housing opportunities. And then you can click here and look at um, a map of the offsite housing. So if you zoom in, here's the Russell neighborhood, and these are the locations of all the Louisville Historic Rising scattered sites. And then you can go to Newbridge Place right here and you can kind of see what's what's around in the neighborhood as well schools and businesses and parks and things like that okay i think that's all i have if we're ready to roll on to questions i will stop